So, the cloud. You've heard of it. I've heard of it. Everyone's heard of it. Not a single person can tell you what it is. But it's actually an idea that has its roots in the beginning of computing itself. So, uh, this is the entire history of the cloud, I guess. The whole thing began in the early 1960s when the United States government was having a friendly discussion with their neighbor. And while everybody seemed to really like computers, they had the problem of them being very blow upable. If you destroyed one in one city, let's use Cleveland as an example for absolutely no reason at all, once that city's gone, so is the data stored there. So some smart people at the US military <laughs> thought about it and they realized that they had two big problems. Computers are big and expensive. How do we make it so that more than one person could use one of them? And also, how do we make it so our data survives bombs? So like that, the team at DARPA created Project Mac, which created the concept of remote job entry or time sharing. This encouraged the development of Unix, which was an idea so good that most of the computers in the world still use it today. Little startups called IBM and DEC took these products and stuffed them into government buildings and universities everywhere. Then someone asked, hey, we have a lot of computers now, and they all thought about it, and then they had an even smarter idea of making different computers talk and share data. So they paid a few people, graced a few palms, and installed some private copper wiring between universities and government buildings. Some cool people wrote code that taught computers how to share, and in 1969, ARPANET was born. Now, computers are chatting up a storm, and it's making the world start to work really fast. Companies are using computers to trade stocks, even buying buildings next door to stock exchanges, and banks to beat lag. This ends up being a really popular idea. More people want to get onto ARPANET, but it's filled with forbidden secrets. The US government decides that it wants to let more people in on this economic goodness, declassifies the technology, and overnight, dozens and dozens of ISPs pop up and start building the infrastructure we rely on today, like TCP IP and the World Wide Web. And voila, you've got an internet going there. Now you've got people all over the world asking for more and more content and data and stuff. At this point, most computers can only talk to each other directly. A lot of the ISPs get together and say, hey, we need to start moving data around so that our servers are being used more efficiently. So root servers appear, then a layer outside them, then another layer outside them. Now everybody's asking for content from whichever servers closest to them. Oh, quick side note, I'm sure you're asking, why is it called the cloud? In the late 90s, when ISPs started experimenting with mapping the internet, they noticed that there were so many connections that making a map of them started to look like a blurry cloud. Like this. In 1998, a couple of guys at MIT see the situation and ask, hey, I wonder if we can cache data that a lot of people want and then serve it to servers closer to where people live. And that was a really good idea that everyone seemed to like. Now, we have a big internet with businesses and people on it, all doing the stuff people do. Chatting, sharing pictures, sharing files, and now, buying stuff. In 2002, a little online bookstore from Seattle founded Amazon Web Services, meant to offer the servers it built for its store operations to other people willing to pay a little money. Then, in 2003, a group of computer scientists looked at servers and asked, These things were great and all, but is there any way we can use them even more efficiently? They thought about it for a while, and then they came up with the idea of virtual machines, which tricks a computer into thinking that it's actually 100 computers. Then, some smart fellows thought, hey, we could make a business out of that. Then, Linode was born. A couple years later, Amazon launches EC2, which tries to make it so servers never run out of capacity, as long as your wallet doesn't either. Okay, now things are starting to move really, really fast. Homes are getting broadband, we're burying cables in the ocean, and hey look, islands can talk to us through metal that we put in the sky. And now we all seem to have a glowing rectangle with internet on it. Netflix decides they're over DVDs and starts streaming. Google, Dropbox, Apple, and a bunch of other companies are starting to charge money to keep files on their servers so you can get to it from any device. Cloud companies start developing specialized security tools and network tools. And then a bunch of other stuff happened. And now the internet is here. The internet is there. The internet is in your brain. The internet is in your car. It's in the sky. And one day the internet will someday power the future thing, which will form the basis of the future future thing. Then the sun will consume the planet. Bye.